Righteous greetings, righteous greetings, righteous greetings. It is Wednesday. Welcome to the Singles Waiting Room. I am your hostess, JC Prophetess B, aka the Truth Hacker, and I'm coming to you tonight with a special message. And as always, I'm excited. So I would first like to give a love shout out to my apostles, the apostles of Jesus, Apostle Calvin and Evelyn Harrington. I love you guys. Um, so much gratitude. Words can't even express the love that I have um, under the stewardship in your love for you all. Thank you so much for everything that you have poured into me and cleaned out of me. In Jesus' name, I love you. And may the blessings of the Lord overtake you abundantly forever, forever, forever. Also, I want to say thank you to all the new subscribers, those who has emailed. Thank you. I appreciate your correspondence. And I hope you received mine as well. And don't forget to share the broadcast. And although this is the singles waiting room, it's just not for single individuals. There are married couples who are also involved in the ministry um, who God has allowed me to minister to as well. Um, but I am single and there's a process in being single into being married. So that's why um, my focal point is the singles waiting room. But even in being married, you have to wait. So bless you all. And again, don't hesitate to hit the hit the like button or even subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything and it doesn't pay me anything. So thank you again for tuning in tonight. And tonight we're going to get just a little up close and personal with the ladies tonight. And this is about Boaz. Um, this message is dear to me because we are taught uh, that we, we are looking for our Boaz. We are looking for our Boaz. And I do want to let you all know that for the sake of this message, I'm going to stay on the external um, interpretation of this message just so everybody can relate and we all can come in oneness with understanding. Now, again, I am your hostess, JC Prophetess B., AKA the truth hacker. So of course there is an internal truth that has been revealed to me about Boaz. So I will just release a portion of that so that later on we'll be able to open that and go into that. So internally Boaz is a pillar, a spiritual pillar. Now, later on again, another time, another topic, we will talk about what type of pillar Boaz spiritually means. And don't forget that every name in the Bible means something. And it's always not as physical and external as we use it. But for the sake of this message, we're going to stay on the surface of the external understanding because most of us have that interpretation that we can relate to. And even I myself can. Because for a long time, I thought I was looking for Boaz as well. So ladies, let's get into this. So the first thing I want to remind you of is Boaz. So in order for Ruth to find Boaz, there was a process that Ruth had to go through. Now, you may want to go back and read it for yourself. Get your own revelation and eye refreshener. Again, this is just an opener of what has been revealed to me. And tonight, we're not even going to be using what has been revealed to me. We're going to be using what we have been taught and understand this to mean to us by this interpretation, this concept of Boaz. And being single, 90%, 95% of ministries always put in our face that we are looking for this Boaz. Like this is this is the type of man, this is the type of husband that we want. We want a Boaz, we want a Boaz. But then first of all, 
In order to, for us to get a Boaz, we have to be a Ruth. So let's just relate to Ruth for a second because Ruth was a widow. And so that means you need to be in a widow position to be to receive Boaz as Ruth received Boaz. That's the one. This is just a refresher to open up your mind, open up your spirit to get into more of what God is really saying versus the surface or the external view of how we interpret God's word and, and how we uh, conform God's word to us and not us conforming to God's word in the spiritual sense of it. Now, again, again, we all understand the same type of interpretation. So we're going to stay right here on the external points, but I just want to keep relating to you so that you can understand the differences and just look at it for yourself to get what you need to get out of this message. Also, when you go in and just read uh, the scripture about it, Boaz was actually the second choice for Ruth because the first brother had to release Boaz. They had to convince the first brother to release Boaz and to Ruth because Boaz wasn't even the next brother in line to marry Ruth. So Ruth had to do some persuading things in order to have Boaz go and persuade the other brother to find out if the other brother wanted to marry her. The other brother gave permission for Boaz to marry her. He said, you know, go ahead. But look at just even if we just stay right there for a second. Look at the process of what's overlooked when we are looking for or conforming things to look the way we want it to look. Now, on the outskirts of everything I just said, far as we know as, both uh, Ruth, her husband died. She went with her mom, with the mother-in-law. Her sister-in-law left because her husband was dead too. She um, went in the field. She worked in the field and she presented herself as this beautiful woman and 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 she um and he came to her and and he rescued her from working in the field and laboring and they were poor and he was rich and so that is the surface or the circumference of what we have been given versus what's really going on so i say all of this to you ladies and myself as to say, many times we have the wrong concept of what we're looking for because of one, what we were told, how we were raised, um, the concepts that we have built in life ourselves based on past relationships that we have had, um, based on past hurts that we have had, past loves that we have had, so, um, even looking at our parents or our single parents. So we have built this concept of love and this interpretation of love based on a natural sense. And when you do that, you when it comes to the internal nurturing, you can give that or get that. Because if you're looking at just the riches of who he was, it took a process for him to be a rich man. So here you come and working in the field and he done release you from the field just based on what we know this not even going into everything and so now where's your place he while you're home he's still the high stature man the boaz that you was looking for but now you're no longer in the field so what are you doing what are you doing in order to uh be his helpmate or help fulfill him in the in what he's doing so I'm still just going in the area and I'm targeting that the concept of how we build up these images and we build up these interpretations and we listen to all these concepts, but they are not a reality as to what we need to be looking for and what we need to define as a husband. Boaz, if you want a Boaz, then you need to go find you got to go through the process that Naomi, uh, uh, that Ruth went through to get the Boaz. Now, ladies, of course, I have 
a suggestion of what I think. And this is just my own personal suggestion based on my own personal um, process of being cleaned out, of thinking what I thought love was and looking for love in the wrong places and the wrong types of love based on what life has persuaded me to believe love is. I personally would like a Joseph. Why would I like a Joseph instead of a boy? Well, let's visit Joseph just for the sake of external messaging only, external concepts and understanding only. We're not going into the deep internal spiritual sense right now. Joseph was empty enough for God to come and speak to him to tell him that his wife was impregnated with the spirit of God. He was in a position to hear and connect with God. Not only that, he was in a position to connect with the same God that had connected with her. So they were on one accord. So if I am right now impregnated with what God has put in me, I want someone who's going to let this, who's going to be with me and allow this thing to develop in me and not hinder the growth to try to come contaminate me. Come on here with me now to try to come and contaminate me and stop the growth because he wants me to be what he wants me to be and not allow me to be and birth the thing that God has put in me. See, with the Joseph, based on the external concept now, Joseph was in the same place that Mary, Mary was in as far as virginity and, and, and the fact that they were available for God to speak to. The same God that impregnated Mary was the same God that spoke to Joseph. So it means that they were on one accord. Because if not, if, if we have two different gods, then it's hard for my God to get through to the mate that I'm with because there's a blockage there. So even if whoever God is whoever God, and for the sake of what we learn and understanding, when you marry, you go with your husband's God. So it's like you have to forsake your God to go with your husband God. So you definitely want a, someone that's on the same accord as you, regardless of whoever your God is. But as for me, I, I want a Joseph. I want somebody that God can speak to and say, hey, I put this, I put this thing in her. I put my spirit in her. And I want her to carry this thing through. And I need you to be with her. Don't forsake her. Don't touch her. Don't hinder the progress of what I have put in her. Let her feed her and, and love her and nurture her so that this thing can be fully birthed at, it, at its full birth time. And when it is birthed, both of you are going to prosper in, in a sense of spiritualness, not always money. In a sense of spiritualness, and, and I'm going to be with you and she. They were in the same position, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies, we have to come off of this thing with this Boaz, this image of Boaz that we have been given. We have been distracted. We have been bamboozled. And there are, now don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Um, I, I give regard to the widow. And there are women that are in a position like Ruth that will have or will need or, or is in need or is looking for a Boaz. However, I'm speaking to the ladies such as myself who have, it's like 80% of the women who are looking for this Boaz haven't even recognized that they really are not looking for Boaz. And this is not what they really need. You don't need a Boaz, you need a Joseph. Someone who's able to withstand and be obedient. Joseph was obedient to God. God said, I put this thing in her. Don't touch her. You are not to be with her. And he was not with her. He waited with her. And only because God said, because remember, he was going to leave her, but until God spoke to her, to him. But God wouldn't, have, the same God that Mary had, wouldn't have been able to speak to Joseph if they wasn't one accord with the same God. He was available for God to speak to. So ladies, he was not established yet. She was not established yet. God was establishing them. And even though uh, for external purposes, physically, they were coming together to be married. 
but spiritually God had plans for them. So he impregnated her before she was contaminated. Come on, ladies. Before she was contaminated. In this single place where you get impregnated because of your, um, your, your intimacy with God. Right now, in this place, your intimacy with God. When you get impregnated, and, and if I meet someone right now, he has to be able to, to hold up and wait. And allow God to speak with him to know how to handle me. Because I got something. I got something in me. I got the spirit of God in me. And I can't have no one. I can't risk no one coming to contaminate or kill what God has already impregnated me with. Because I'm looking for this natural intimacy. And that interferes with my spiritual intimacy. Because he has no idea that he needs to have a spiritual intimacy with God. So then we can be spiritually intimate as well as naturally intimate when it comes to that time. Oh my God, I just said so much. But it's real and it's like that. And I, I'm like overly excited because I've been wanting to talk about this for a long time. And I still have like so much more revelation about this. But for the purposes of this message and tonight, I want to say, ladies, I want you to go check yourself and be sure to find out if you want Boaz or if you want a Joseph or who do you want? Who do you want? Just because they said your only option was Boaz. That's what they said. What did God say? What did you, are you hearing God? Has God impregnated you? Are you intimate with God? Where he can, um, you can have spiritual conception with him. Has he imparted something in you, or, or is your mate coming with it? Come on, ladies, we got to get in position. We're looking for these, these, this, this man, and think he's supposed to come fulfill everything. But God said, your maker is your husband. Your maker is your husband, and that's the scripture. That's the scripture as well. So we can go externally or internally with that one. Your maker is your husband. So we, we have to stop all of this nonsense and these shenanigans, these uh, imaginations. These, these things have to be cast down that we have built ourselves up with this all oh, this, this world. You know, one time God told me about um, looking for a husband. You looking for this man, but you better have the contributions that you expect him to have. Oh, you want somebody that got a good job. Do you have a good job? Oh, you want someone that don't have any kids. Do you have kids? Oh, you want someone that, that's considerate of you. Are you considerate? Oh, you want someone to take care of you. Can you take care of you? Or can you take care of them? What if something happens along the way? So I'm not, ladies, I'm just saying we got to get, we got to do better. We got to do better. And this is why being single is it, a process. And so if you're single for two days, 10 days, two years, I've been single over six years now. And guess what? I'm celibate and I'm sold out and I have total intimacy with God. So when is my time? Not only am, am I going to know, he's going to know. Because we're going to be on one accord because I'm not settling for Boaz. I'm looking for Joseph. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, JC Prophetess B, a.k.a. The Truth Hacker. Don't forget, checking me out on Wednesday. Also, stop by to our father station, AJ Ministries on YouTube. You can also check them out on Apostles of Jesus, uh, dot one, two, three. And you can also check out, we have a, a video studio, a photography studio. Give us a call. Ministry videos, commercials, everything. one 866 822 You can email me and thank you all for your responses and correspondence. You can email me at uh, jcprofitisb at gmail.com. I look forward to seeing you next Wednesday. Sorry that we had to go tonight, but you have a righteous night and I'll see you next week with a great topic. Gentlemen, get ready because I'm coming for your Proverbs, your Proverbs 31 wives. I'll be there maybe next week. Who's to say? Stay tuned. Hit the like button and subscribe. Have a righteous night, everyone.